Praise God. You know, I want to preach this morning. God's been dealing with me. You know, this has been a powerful conference. I don't know about you, but, you know, God's began to do something new in my heart. He put something, and, and, and there's like seeds, and the seeds are beginning to grow and beginning to blossom, beginning to, to bloom. And, and, you know, it's just amazing what God's doing. And I want to take, and some of the stuff I'm going to be saying, you know, as I was hearing these great men of God preach, and Albert Contreras is just walking in, amen, good to see him. <laughs> I'm not trying to put him on the spot or nothing, but, but you know what? I, I told him the other day, I said, brother, you preached my message. And then Ron Simpkins got up and he preached the rest of my message. And I said, God, what are you doing? And God says, you know what? I gave you a word. You give the word. Yeah. Amen. So with your permission, that's what I'm going to do this morning. Let's just pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, we come before you, God, boldly before the throne of grace. And God, and we're asking that you would move this morning. Father, like you've never moved before, God. Father, I pray that it's not the enticing words of the wisdom of a man. But God, I pray, demonstrate. Demonstrate your power, your grace, your mercy, God. And Lord, I pray that we would leave this place different than when we came in. Father, I don't want to be the same. I want to be new. I want to be transformed. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. amen. I want to thank uh, all the workers in the, in, that just made this conference possible, yeah. amen. The ushers, the sound, the MCs, everybody that you've done. I mean, thank you so much. We couldn't do what we do if you wouldn't do what you do. And I just thank God for you. I'm going to preach this morning out of Romans. If you have your Bible, your phone, your tablet, however you do it. Amen. Romans chapter 11. God impressed this in my heart. As we begin to prepare for this conference and this message. In Romans eleven twenty nine, and I'm be reading out of the Amplified Version. It says, for the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. For he does not withdraw what he has given, nor does he change his mind about those to whom he gives his grace or to whom he sends his call. See, God has called each and every one of us in here this morning. Can you say amen? And I wondered, God, well, what exactly is a calling? You know, we hear the call. I mean, that sounds, ooh, the call. I mean, that's amazing. I said, but God, what is a call? What is the calling? And I was directed to John 15, verse 16, again in the Amplified. And it says, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and I have appointed, and I have placed and I purposefully planted you so that you would go and bear fruit and keep on bearing and that your fruit will remain and be lasting so that whatever you ask of the Father in my name as my representative, he may give to you. So I got out of that that a calling is the placing of a person into an appointment or a position where they will be most effective for fulfilling yes. God's purpose in yes. their life. Amen. See, the calling, it's an individual calling. We're all called individually. Amen. And it, it might not, it, uh, we're not called in the same manner, the same way. And we're not called to do the same activities. But we're all called for the same purpose, and that's the purpose of God. Amen. So you see, we read about the Apostle Paul on the road to Damascus. And we all know that powerful. He was on a religious mission. He was a, a devout man, and he was sincere in his purpose, but he was sincerely wrong. Everything he was doing was against the kingdom of God and the purpose that God had. His purpose was wrong, but he was the right man. And see, what God had to do is God had to transition him from where he was and the direction he was going into the purpose that God had for him. And see, many of us are the same way, that we were sincere, amen, before we gave our life to Christ. And even now, even after we're saved, we're sincere in what we're going and what we're doing. But we might be sincerely wrong. Can you say amen? amen. Then God has to come, and he's got to transition us, amen. And he's got to move us over into the place where he can have us to do what he needs us to do or wants us to do. Because the purpose is God's purpose, amen. Hallelujah. 
If I fall, don't worry, man. I'm not like Biden. I'll get back up. So, <laughs> glory to God. I didn't mean to say that. And we see Mary. Can you imagine just the mother of God, a young girl? See, most people believe that she was between the ages of 12 and 14 years old. When the angel Gabriel came and he dropped the Holy Ghost bomb on her. Can you imagine this? Here she was a young girl like, like other young girls all around her. And she had dreams and she had a purpose. And she really felt that her purpose was to have this marriage and be married. And she was excited and, and she was happy. And, you know, she's going to share this with her friends and her family. But then Gabriel came and he had a, a whole different thing from God. See, she just thought she was going to be like all the other little girls and, and, and the people around her. That her life would be the same as theirs. That she was going to go to work every day, come home. That she was going to have a family. That she was going to do this and do that. But God had to change her idea of what purpose was. Your purpose when you become a Christian isn't just to be an ordinary Joe. Amen. It isn't to be an ordinary Linda. Amen. Your purpose is to be what God called you to be. Amen. And he had to change her idea of purpose. And that's what's been happening in this conference. Amen. That God's been changing our idea of what purpose really is for our life. And you know what he wants to change is the Apostle Paul said, in Galatians 1.15, he said, But when he who had set me apart before I was born, and who called me by his grace, I want you to realize there's two things. That he called me before the foundations of the earth. And we, we've, we've talked about that, and that's amazing. And that's something that we can grab a hold on. That you know what, that during the hard time, I remember that God called me. And he didn't just call me today. He didn't just call me yesterday. But before the foundations of the earth, that before he made the devil, amen, he called me. And the Bible also tells that it, not only did he call you before the foundations of the earth, but he loved me. Before the foundations of the earth. So his calling isn't an ugly thing. It isn't a punishment. Because he called me out of his love. Before the foundations of the earth. See like Paul. You have been set apart. You have been called before you were born. You're not an accident. You're not insignificant in the kingdom. You are the right one. For the purpose that God has called in your life. Amen. The scripture that we use for the conference, Isaiah 41.4. I, I, I read it out of the Amplified. And it said, who has performed this? Who has done this? Calling forth and guiding the destinies of generation. We talked about destiny a little bit yesterday. The destinies. God guides the destinies. It's not a coincidence that you're here. It's destiny that you're here. Amen. You could be curled up in your bed sleeping, but God has a destiny. And part of that destiny is you're here this morning hearing this word from this crazy guy. Amen. That's destiny. And who did it? God says, I did it. I did it from the beginning to the last. I'm the one who did it. It's God. See, it might not be the calling that you want. It might not be the calling that you think that you're best suited for. Well, God, you don't know my ability. God, I need to be on America's Got Talent. You know, God, you, you know who I am. It not might be what you think you're suited for. You might say, God, I trained all my life to do this. God, this is what I want. This is what I need. But God's purpose, amen, for us can be different. 2 Timothy 1.9. He said, for he delivered us and he saved us and he called us with a holy calling, a calling that leads to a life of purpose. We all want to have a purpose. Yeah. How many times have you said, God, what am I here for? God, what am I doing here? God, why, Lord? Why am I with these people? Why am I in this city? Why am I in this place? Because God has called us to a life of purpose and it says, not because of our works or because any of your personal merit. We can do nothing to earn this. It's not your abilities. It's not how you look. Amen. Thank God. <laughs> it's not how you look, but it's his call. And it's because of his purpose 
And his grace, there's that word again, grace. Grace. See, all through the word of God, there's grace. And see, as Christians, many times what we do is we limit the things of God, the attributes, the gifting, the things that God wants to do, and we limit them. Just like, you know, for like repentance. We like to limit it. A lot of people limit it like it's uh, stopping sin. And other people say, well, it's turning away and, and going a different direction. Well, see, it's not just one of those things. It's both of those things. Yeah. You know, the thing is you stop sinning, and what you do is you change your direction, and you're going towards God, and you're going towards the purpose of God. And it's not enough to say, well, you know what? I changed my direction, but did you stop sinning? It's not enough to say, well, I don't do that anymore. But where are you going? Are you doing what God has called you to do? See, don't limit the wording of God. And we limit grace. Grace, we define grace as the unmerited favor of God. I mean, that sounds good, doesn't it? Wow, the unmerited favor. Well, I don't know, what is favor? What is unmerited? I know unmerited means you don't work for it. But the favor of God, God's got his hand on your life. He's doing this. I understand that. But there's another part of grace. And that other part of grace is enabling us to do what we can't do. Yes. That's the other part of grace. And we can't have just one. We got to take both of them. God has given me favor. And he's enabling me to yes. do what I can't do. Yes. And many times when we're walking out our calling of God. And we look and say, God, I can't do this. God, this is too hard. It's not a, it's, I'm not able, God. But God's grace comes in. And he enables us to do what we can't do in the natural. In the natural, this isn't me to speak before my heroes. Amen. Speaking before Ron Simpkins and Joe Widinger, when I was a little baby, I used to listen to them, and I would rejoice, and I was excited, hallelujah, amen. I mean, I was just a tiny baby, hallelujah. I'll be corrected later, amen. But by the grace of God. But by the grace of God, I can stand here empowered by God. Yes. God has empowered me. Yes. I wasn't called by man. Yes. I didn't decide to do this on my own. But God called me before the foundations of the world. That has to sink into our head. God has repeated that over and over and over and over again. Why? My dad used to tell me all the time, and I'm sure Mark heard it too. He said, oh, Ronald Grego, Ronald Grego, Cabeza de Borrego. <laughs> and those of you that aren't uh, bilingual, like I'm not either, but uh, what he was saying, he says, Ron Grego, Ron Grego, man, you got a sheep's head, or you're, you're thick-headed. And see, God knows that we're thick-headed, and so God repeats Repeats before the foundation, I called you. Before I called you. And see, in Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Check it out. I know. Who knows? Almighty God. He said, I, Almighty God, I know the plans I, Almighty God, I have for you, says Jehovah, Almighty God. I mean, he's emphasizing something. That he said, you know what, I've called you, and there are plans for good and not disaster, to give you a future and a hope. One translation says to give you an expected end. I'm doing this. The plan is specific to you. God called you, Kim. You, specifically you. The net, God called you, specifically you. He didn't call a city. He didn't call a nation. He didn't call the world. He called you, Valentine. It's a specific call. You're not shouting like I'm preaching glory to God. He called you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, God. Help me, Lord. I wish somebody was picking up what I'm putting down. I mean, I, Lord, help me, Jesus. See, one of the things that really used to bother me is the story of Jonah. 
Remember, we kind of heard about Jonah a little bit, and it always bothered me. Right in the beginning of Jonah, you know, God gives Jonah this message. I want you to go preach to Nineveh. And so you know what Jonah does? He goes down and he buys him a ticket to Tarshish. I mean, wait a minute. The call was to Nineveh. What are you doing going to Tarshish? See, at the time, Tarshish was the furthest you can get from Nineveh. So, you know, Jonah didn't want to get away. He wanted to have a, a Calgon moment, and he wanted to get far away. Hallelujah. He wanted to get as far as he can get from God. And I'm thinking, God, why all the drama? Why the drama, God? Why the storm? Why the, the casting of lots? Why the big fish? God, why all the drama? You know, that during that time, Amos, he was a prophet. Isaiah was a prophet. They were all prophets during the same time, Jonah. Why didn't you go get Isaiah? Isaiah would have done it. He would have liked to see 120,000 people get saved. Amen. But no, he caused a storm. He caused the whale. He caused all this stuff to happen. Why? Because it was Jonah's calling from the foundations of the earth. And God will bring you back into the place where you need to be. God will bring you. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for the grace of God. What happens if I fall, brother? What happens if I mess up? You think God didn't know that? You think God didn't know that Jonah was going to get a ticket? God knew, you know, when he called him in the foundations of the earth, he knew that he was going to run. And he said, uh huh. You're going to run? Storm. Here, fishy, fishy. Come on. And we're going to get you back in line. I don't know. I, I got some lumps on my head. Amen. Where, where God's put me back in line. But see, the thing is, is you called, you've stumbled. You've fallen. I'm speaking to somebody right now. I'm reading your mail. You don't quit. You get up. And you get back into Christ. Because my Bible tells me that the steps of a righteous man are ordered by God. That if I get back in that righteous position, if I get back into Christ, that what God's going to do is he's going to guide my steps. And he's going to direct me which way I'm going to go directly into his purpose. Directly into his calling. Directly into what he wants me to be and he wants me to do. If this was my mic, I'd drop it. See, I want you to get something this morning. The calling is a supernatural call. Supernatural. Amen. Like, it's not a vacation. It's not a vocation, I should say. It's not a vocation. It's not a job. It's not a career. It's a supernatural call. God called you. And you know what? If God called me, that all of the gifting of that office, yes. of that position are mine. Amen. Yes. If he called you to be a pastor, all the gifts that go along with pastoring are in you. Yes. If you're called to be a prophet, prophesy. Come on. Hmm. <laughs> Glory. Thank you, Jesus. You know, the most powerful thing in your life is the calling of God on your life. The calling of God is like a spiritual atomic bomb. If you've ever heard or seen the devastation of an atomic bomb, it's not just a hole in the ground. But there's ripple effects that it goes on and on and on. And it affects that city. It affects that place. There's still radiation in Nagasaki and Hiroshima. There's still effects of that bomb today. 
Generations are impacted. Your calling is a spiritual atomic bomb. Generations are impacted. Amen. I knew Albert Contreras when he was just a normal guy before he became famous. Amen. I knew him. And I've seen that atomic bomb, amen, explode. And he called me and told me, brother, I'm going to Pakistan. I go, he goes, what? He said, I'm going to Pakistan. Impacting the world. Impacting the world. The call will impact more than you. It's a personal call, but it impacts more than just you. See, it impacts our family. How many here you got saved because somebody in your family got saved? Raise your hand. Praise God. Atomic bomb. It's for your city. You see, Jonah, his calling impacted Nineveh. The whole city got saved. Man, even the donkeys were in sackcloth. Man. Paul. His calling impacted the Gentile nations. See, your calling has a lot further impact than you can even think or imagine. Amen. The calling of God is a supernatural call. You know, everything supernatural has to be done with faith. We can't separate the supernatural and faith. Well, God called me. Well, that's not enough. Because somewhere your faith has to connect with the call of God. God's empowered you. But unless your faith connects to that power, it won't do any good. So when the calling of God is on your life, you have to, through faith, begin to step out and do what God has called you to do. I remember myself as a, as a young believer I was there, and I wanted, to, I wanted to preach. And I remember every time they would come, and, and, and uh, we'd have an evangelist, and they'd give words, and, and, and stuff would come out. And, and I was sharing with Benny that every time they would come, you know, they would call out, uh, you know, different people. Brother, you're going to preach to the nations. Brother, you're going to do the Brother, you're going to do that. And, 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 and I'm, I'm like here, and I'm, man, I'm, you ever pull on somebody? You're looking at me, you're pulling. Oh, I need that word. And, and, and they would come to me, and, and this is the truth. I'm sitting right here, and they said, Brother, you're going to preach to the nations. And, and, and brother, you're going to, and I skip right over me. And I'm like, <laughs> and I get to where I'd be bold when they're prophesying over this guy next to me. I'm putting my head over there, <laughs> trying to push his head out of the way. <laughs> me and I said God send me God I want to preach and I would preach in front of the mirror hallelujah I, I, I would I would have altar calls and I would always come amen <laughs> and I would say I remember I said God send me to my people my people God I wanted to go to Mexico I wanted to go to South America Central America God send me to my people and I remember I was in this church, and they came, uh, they came up to me, and they said, Brother, we're going to Poland, and we'd like you to go with us. I said, what? <laughs> I said, Poland? I said, no, nah, you know, I'm not really burdened for Poland. And he said, besides, you know, I ain't, got, I ain't got the money to go to Poland. And he said, you know what, brother? Somebody has paid your way full, full ride. Oh, yeah. I said, well, I'll go. You know, but I was bummed. Because it didn't fit into my idea of calling. I went home that day and I was bummed. And I said, God, I wanted to go to my people. And you're sending me to Poland. I said, I can't even speak Polish. <laughs> you know what I like about God? He doesn't talk to me in King James. You know, what, you, know what, you know what God spoke to me in my heart? I never heard an audible voice, but I knew he was talking. <laughs> because you know what he spoke in my heart? I said, God, I can't even speak Polish. He said, you can't even speak Spanish. <laughs> I 
to, uh, true that. <laughs> and he says, I'm not sending you to your people. I'm sending you to my people. <laughs> your idea of call is too small. God's idea of your call is bigger than you can even think of. Imagine. God ain't done. God's doing things. Amen. And you know what? We live in the most precious time, man, ever. Look at all the lost. I mean, that's just like a, a, a fat guy going to a buffet. Amen. See, I know because I'm a fat guy and I like buffets. Amen. And, and, and you go to a, a buffet and you're there and you go, mm, man, what, what, look at all this. Amen. And that's what we live in, man. We live in a time when there's so many people that need Jesus. There's so many um, yeah. colors and denominations and people and nations. They need Jesus. It's a buffet. Oh. And it's ready for your calling. Amen. But see, what happens is we've taken faith in the church and we've made it a kind of a mind over matter or, you know, where a positive thinking type of thing. And what we do is we add faith to our natural abilities and our natural talents. And it's just a, a standalone. And we call it faith. And see, in many times... We begin to rely on the flesh because that's the main thing is our flesh, our talent, our ability. And, and what we do is we begin to rely on that and we begin to measure our success by the measuring stick of the world. How much money we have. How many followers, how popular I am. We use the measuring stick of the world. You see, when I was in the military, you might not believe it, but I retired from the Air Force. I should have got one of those, those films like my brother had, you know. <laughs> Amen. But see, in the Air Force, we kind of, we weren't, we weren't like that. We were more kicked back. Amen. The Marines were in tents. We were in a hotel. Amen. They had fans like this. We had air conditioning. Amen. <laughs> Amen. It, brother, am I lying? <laughs> See, when I was in the military, we would have, part of my job in the military was I did maintenance. And in maintenance, we'd troubleshoot things down to a part. And we would order the part. We'd always have trouble with supply because they had this thing called a suitable sub. And what we would do is many times I would, we would work something for an example. I'll just give an example. Is we needed to replace a light bulb. And the light bulb had to go in this little narrow place about this big, and you put the bulb in there. It's a 60-watt bulb. So what we did is we ordered the 60-watt bulb, put all the information in, send it in. Well, they didn't have it at the depot, so what they did is they gave us a suitable sub. We get the suitable sub, we unpack the box, and it's this big. It don't work. It don't fit. Many times the devil wants to give you a suitable sub for the calling of God in your life, but it don't work. It don't fit. Don't settle for a suitable sub. What looks like success in the world, that's not what we measure it by. But we measure it by what God is calling us. Some people have substituted and have accepted that suitable sub. And they're missing the call of God. And so whenever difficulty comes, whenever a hard time comes, what they begin to do is what they do is they begin to question God. Or they question their faith. Or they question their call. Well, maybe I wasn't really called. Maybe it wasn't really God that I heard because they're looking at natural things. See, in Philippians, and I'm coming close to a close. It says, Philippians 4, 12. It says, I know how to get along and live humbly in difficult times. And I also know how to enjoy abundance and live in prosperity in any and every circumstance. Now, listen to this. I have learned the secret of facing life. 
Christians, we need to learn the secret of facing life. Just because you're going through a hard time doesn't mean that you're not called. Just because you're going through a hard time doesn't mean that, that God isn't with you. It doesn't mean that. It's life. You're facing life. Paul says, I learned the secret of facing life. I know, he goes on to say, he says, in, in every circumstances, I've learned the secret, whether to be well-fed or going hungry, whether having abundance or being in need. And then he goes on to say to this verse that's misused so much. He says, I can do all things which he has called me to do. Amen. Through him who strengthens and empowers me to fill his purpose. I can do, I, I see, his brother, I can do all things. You can't do brain surgery. You can. not Amen. You confess it. You do whatever you want. You ain't, you ain't doing surgery on this brain. Amen. I can do all things. You can do all things that he's called you to. Because he empowers you. Oh, my God. He's getting through, God. He get all things that he's empowered you to. All things that he's brought to you. All things that he's given you. All the gifts, all the power are in full effect. And they're working in your life. Amen. Philippians. He says, for me to live means living for Christ. And dying is even better. But if I live, I can do more fruitful work for Christ. I don't really know which is better. I'm torn between two desires. I long to go be with Christ, which would be better for me. But for your sakes, it's better that I continue to live. You know what Paul is saying? He wasn't saying this from the back seat of a, of a Rolls Royce. He wasn't saying this from the seat of a private jet. He was in prison. And he said, it's better for me to live that I can bring fruit to your life rather than go and be with Jesus. I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. I want to be with Jesus. But Paul says, you know what? It's better for me. And I go, Paul, why? And he said, because it's my call. Because it's my call. It's not the comfort of the world. It's not even being with Jesus. It's fulfilling the purpose that Jesus has for me. My last scripture, Philippians 3.12. He says, not as though I have already attained. Either we're already perfect, but I follow after that I may apprehend that for which I also am apprehended of Christ Jesus. You know what that's been saying? There's, been, there's a whole bunch of you here that's been apprehended. You know what I'm talking about. Amen. You've been apprehended? Amen. Yeah. Assume the position. Amen. You, Paul says, I'm going to apprehend that for which I've been apprehended. That God got me for a purpose. That God got me for a reason. And I'm going to apprehend that. God apprehended me. God apprehended you. You weren't looking for God. God had to run you down, and some of you, he put you in a headlock, amen, and he threw you against the car and patted you down, amen. You were apprehended, and the same attitude, the same feeling, Paul is saying, that's how I'm going for my purpose, that's why I'm going for my calling. I'm going to apprehend that call of God on my life. <laughs> 